Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf in this video reviewing supermarket teas from the USA. In this series of videos, I blind taste teas which have been purchased from a supermarket, kindly sent to us from tea heads around the world. I try to work out what the tea is, I try to guess the price point, and I rate the tea from poison to pinnacle tea. A score of 10, meaning that the tea is good enough to be selected as a May leaf tea, which is very high praise indeed. Now, we never expect supermarkets to reach the lofty heights of specialty tea sellers. The tea buyers have got a whole different set of pressures that they have to think about when selecting their teas. But what we're trying to do with these videos is try to encourage just a general increase in quality of teas available at the supermarket. Remember, these teas have to come from supermarkets, not any specialist store. And the teas that we've got today come from Woodman's Market. They've been sent to us by Sue. Thank you, Sue, in Wisconsin. I think it's Jamestown, Wisconsin this comes from. That's all I know. I know nothing about this, uh, this selection of teas here. Celine has written some information in cards, which I don't know about. Let's dive in with the first one. Right, I'm going to put... The scoop on a scale here, and we're going to see what we've got. Okay, not a bad start. We've got a loose leaf tea here. I'm just going to eyeball it a little bit. I'm going to put 4.5 grams in, there or thereabouts. Let's take a look at these leaves while I heat up this flute brewer here. Flute brewers are back in stock. New and improved version, even thicker glass. So we're gonna heat that up. Very simple setup, pig trough, flute brewer. You don't need a lot of gear to do gong fu brewing. Obviously it's nice to have those expansive sessions as well. Let's take a look at these leaves. Look, not bad. I mean, this is obviously um, uh, slightly broken up leaves. They're not fully whole leaf, but you know, it's not CTC. It's not crushed up and it's not like powder. It's not tea bag cut. This is meant to be uh, consumed and brewed whole leaf like this. We've got, you know, decent colors, nice glossy sort of auburn browns, little cherry wood browns in there. There are some stems in here, so it's not like super high quality, but not too shabby at all. This is obviously a black tea, so we can know the tea type immediately. And now let's put these leaves in a hot filter. And pour this wastewater away. Tea leaves go into this filter here. And let's give it a smell. Not bad. Not bad. It smells like a Chinese hotel lobby. Very, very particular smell. Sort of like um, there's a bit of lacquered cherry wood. Um, yeah, lacquered woods. Um, it's got a, a slight sourness, like a slight buchi kombucha sourness to it. A little bit of cherry note happening. A woody. Um, has the, the sourness, the sour note is a little bit extreme. It's a bit sort of a bit too acidic on my nose, but not bad at all. I mean, it also has a sort of fruity lychee sort of note as well. All right, let's give this a quick rinse. Easy to do in the flute brewer, just quick rinse up. This tea is obviously not designed for gong fu brewing. It's a little bit broken up. Again, pour this away. Now let's have a sniff of those wet leaves. Yeah, not bad. I mean, it has a, just a sort of straight ahead um, black tea blend. This is what you would imagine as your sort of higher quality standard British brew. The leaves look relatively small, so I'm gonna guess it's a sinensis blend, but I'll see when I taste it because it could still be an Asamica made with younger pickings or broken pickings. Right, we're gonna brew this quite quickly. So we're gonna do gong fu brewing in this flute brewer. It's always nice to see the color of the tea start to brew. Look how it's darker down at the bottom and then <clears throat> lighter as it rises. Okay, we'll say that that's enough. 
get the last drops out of here. Nice color, good clear color. So all looking good for Woodman's Market. I'm not expecting <clears throat> fireworks, but I'm expecting a decent black tea here. Okay. Cheers, everybody. First tea of the day and suited because this is a straight ahead, you know, no frills, pretty boring, but not offensive in any way. A bit underwhelming because the aroma had more to it. This has a relatively thin texture, a little bit flat. The taste is, is more in the woods, minerals, a little bit of poppy seeds. The fruity aroma that I was getting of cherries and lychees is not really in the cup. I'm getting a slight menthol note happening. Wintergreen. This makes me think that this is an Asamica. Asamica being the larger leaf variety compared to the Sinensis, which is smaller leaf. This makes me think that this is from India, Sri Lanka. I'm going to guess India. Yeah, it's a bit underwhelming, I have to say. A bit boring, flat, dry finish. I'm going to give it a bit of time to see whether or not that, that finish turns into sweetness. I mean, any hotel breakfast that serves a breakfast tea, an English tea, this is what you sort of expect. You could combine it with lemon, combine it with milk. Nobody's going to be writing any love letters to this tea. Nothing special at all. Vague sweetness, a little cherry blossom sweetness in there. Hardly any of those fruity notes that are still in the leaves. So one thing that you will always realize with tea is that the aroma is one thing, the taste is something completely different. And oftentimes you'll be fooled with aroma and then the taste is a bit of a letdown. But the smell is very nice on it. Very nice, overstatement. The smell is nice. I would be happy to drink according to that smell, but this taste, meh. It is straight ahead meh. Okay, so Indian black tea, a blended, slightly cut up Asamica. I'll show you these leaves just so you can see what I mean. It's got a cut up look to it, but you know, it's still resembling whole leaf at least. So it's sort of halfway house and it is just a halfway house tea. The score on this would be straight ahead, meh territory. It's above a four, it's below a five. I'm not interested in reinfusing this. I'm gonna go 4.6. So pretty much straight in, smack bang in meh territory. Let's see what this tea is. From Woodman's, thank you Sue for sending these in. Let's see. Oh, price point, I didn't guess price point. Ah, three cents a gram. Yeah, three cents a gram, it's pretty much standard. Yep, four cents a gram. English breakfast tea, no information, so I can't confirm whether or not it is a Samica or Sinensis or it's from India or Ceylon. I very much doubt it's from China, but it might be, it is possible. So no information, which is a classic supermarket territory. Four cents a gram, which is standard price, decent price for an English breakfast tea. You can't go really wrong with these kinds of teas, but you can't go very right either. Right, let's move on to tea number two. So a pretty boring start for Woodman's. Let's see what tea number two has to offer us. And I'm not particularly excited here. So we've got a, looks like one of those pretty bog standard jasmine green teas. The green tea itself looks dark and old and oxidized and twiggy. And I can see fair amount of those petals in here, jasmine petals. For those of you who don't know, it's a sure sign that the tea is not high grade if you can see a lot of jasmine petals. Now, of course, 
there's going to be the odd stray jasmine petal that goes in, but it's a very common trick used by tea sellers because traditionally jasmine flowers after the scenting process need to be removed because the jasmine, the dry jasmine flower itself doesn't provide any good flavor. It's sort of a slightly bitter brew actually. So they take away all of the uh, jasmine flowers. They can either do this by hand or with fans to blow away because it's lighter than the tea leaves. And this process is obviously time consuming. Supermarkets and uh, other sellers will say to the producers, don't bother doing that step. Sell it to me cheaper because the Western consumer, when they see the jasmine flowers, think that it's actually higher quality, not lower quality. The tea doesn't look particularly great either. Let's uh, give this a quick warm up. This is just gonna be, again, straight down the line, bog standard jasmine green tea. I'm not weighing, I'm just gonna throw in these leaves. Let's give it a smell. Let's see, let's see the quality of the jasmine at least. Ooh, not particularly good. Smells flat. You know, jasmine can have a really, really complex aroma or it can have a very simple jasmine aroma. This is super simple. There's nothing jammy about it. Good jasmine has an almost strawberry jam aroma. But this, it has a vague, sweet, slightly creamy note to it, but it's very flat in terms of its jasmine aroma. It, it, it smells like it's been sitting for a long, long time and the leaves certainly look like they are not the freshest of leaves. It looks sort of like bulk purchased, cut up, oxidized, unloved tea. Let's see the temperature here. 82 degrees, that's about right. Give it a quick rinse, although, you know, with jasmines, you don't really need to rinse because, you know, you are purchasing the tea a lot for the aroma and a lot of the aroma will get washed out if it's not a high quality tea, which this is not. The smell is worse. It has um, just an old, dusty, um, it's like, it. It used to be a creamy aroma, but then it just got covered in a sort of dustiness and, and oldness. It's just got a stale smell to it. Really, really, this I predict was purchased many years ago and has just been purchased in bulk by the supermarket and left to sit in the corner of a warehouse to take a meh tea and reduce the quality even further. Underwhelming, let's just say that. This sort of smells and looks like your average Chinese restaurant. Do you want some tea? Yeah, what tea do you have? Chinese tea, <laughs> one of the worst, worst things I, it always frustrates me when I go to a Chinese restaurant, I ask, yeah, okay, what tea do you have? In the, in the just, the hope, this sort of mad hope that maybe they're gonna come out with, oh, we've got these teas or that teas. Usually they just say Chinese tea, which means jasmine tea, or occasionally they might say they've got oolong tea, which means an old Tie Guan Yin probably sitting around. If you're lucky enough, you might have bole or a cooked pua tea. Um, color, sort of orange, slightly orangey green, but nothing, nothing wrong with it. A little bit cloudy. Uh, here you go. Again, not expecting fireworks, but I hope to be surprised. I'm really not surprised. Texture is medium. Taste is weak. Weak, weak taste. Very little taste of tea. The only sort of semblance of tea that I'm getting is a dryness in my mouth, immediate dryness in my mouth. Um, cut up tea leaves, making um, unnecessarily astringent brew. But in terms of taste, very little there. And in terms of the jasmine, flat, weak, almost got a sort of mothball quality to it. Do you know what I mean? Mothballs have that aroma which 
in some ways is a little bit similar to um, jasmine, which just tastes old. Really, really, really nothing to write home about. Woodman's is just sort of towing the line here with the most bog standard, low quality, bulk teas. Way, way, way too boring. Um, this is a Chinese jasmine green tea, low quality. It's probably from a mixture of Fujinese green tea and Guangxi jasmine, but the, the jasmine could be from another province. In fact, I don't think it's from Guangxi because the jasmine flowers would probably be high quality if it was from Guangxi. Um, what do we give it? Uh, let's take a look at that scoring. It's under a meh. You can call it tea. It's, it's just your average, low quality Chinese restaurant, jasmine tea, a 3.2, I give that. Mm, not making me feel very good either. It has a sort of, there's a certain sense that you get, and it might be psychological, but there's a certain sense that you get in your stomach when a tea may have been um, sprayed a fair amount. There's a certain sort of sensitivity that I have for teas that have been produced poorly. This is one of them, a 3.2. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, not a good feeling in my stomach. Oh, price point, I didn't guess, but I saw it now. 0.04, so the same as the black tea. China Jasmine, no information. Sue, if this is the selection that you have, and remember we say, when you're selecting these supermarket teas, if you want to send us some supermarket teas, try to pick the higher echelon teas. Try to pick the teas that are at least um, the supermarket's superficial showing of higher quality tea. If this is what they've got, then I would say switch supermarkets. Not interested, moving on to the last tea. You always know that you haven't been drinking the finest teas around when your pig trough is full because you're pouring away all the tea only after a couple of infusions. Hopefully, Woodman's can redeem themselves with tea number three. Let's check it out. Okay, this is looking like it's the best of the bunch. Just in terms of looks, this almost looks like an oolong tea in the sense that it's got a slightly lighter color and larger leaves. So this is larger leaf picking here. Looks oolong-like, but does not smell oolong-like. Smells like another black tea. But this, at least the leaf here, the leaf material does look a lot better. I hope you agree. Much, much nicer. Uh, larger twisted leaves, matte in texture, a little few twigs, but that's fine. Not a problem with that. Um, and yeah, the color is again, got a little bit of a cherry note to it. I like the look of these leaves. My interest is perked up. So that's good. Let's see what the aroma of these leaves is. Oh, I can just, just put a little bit of water in there so it doesn't reach the top. That's an interesting way to do it. So you're getting the residual heat coming through without wetting the leaves. Mm, yeah, smells pretty decent. I'm getting some dried fruits, a bit of lacquered wood. Pretty good indeed. Now let's rinse it. So this is definitely a black tea. It almost looks, but it's not, but it almost looks like a Taiwanese black tea that's made from the ruby variety. But yeah, it could be. It's got a lovely wet leaf aroma. I'm getting a bit of those woods and poppy seeds, but I'm also having a nice whiff of um, sugar syrup and jam, cooked down apples. There's also that um, bright, slightly savory vine tomato aroma. My pig trough is full, so I'm gonna pour it into a previous flute brewer. There you go. Now, let's brew this up. This I have much higher hopes for. This is clearly an Assamica. You can see that. This is an Assam tea, but 
It's got those honeyed, sweet sugar syrup notes to it, that character. The color is a lovely, lovely color, like dark cooked down sugar syrup, caramel color. It's beautiful orange brown caramel color. Let's take a look in the cup. Yeah, that's a nice colored tea. Okay, ending on a high note, let's hope. <laughs> Giving it a chance. Let me brew it a little bit longer. Because it's a bit weak, the taste. Yeah. It's vaguely fruity. It's vaguely nutty. It's vaguely sweet. But everything is very vague. It's got a decent dried fruit, honeyed finish to it. This is certainly by far the best tea of the bunch. Yeah, it's got a little sourness, but at the right level, just gives you a little flash of sourness in the back sides of the tongue. It's a perfectly enjoyable tea to drink by itself. It does have a fair amount of physicality, more than the first tea, but in a nice way, because at least it transforms to some level of sweetness. Mm. It's a little bit too dry. It's a little bit, I said that that sourness is at the right level, but as it builds on my tongue, it is persisting a little bit too long. So I'm getting a bit too much sourness and dryness. The taste is, vaguely fruity, a little bit of that menthol, a little bit of that wintergreen, which makes me think, well, it's, it's not Chinese, I would guess. I would guess this is India or Sri Lanka again. That little medicinal wintergreen note in it makes me think it's a Sri Lankan tea or a low quality Taiwanese. Mm. Could be a low quality Taiwanese black tea, more likely a Sri Lankan Ceylon. Let's um, try to figure out what it is. I'm gonna guess this is a Assam Ceylon black tea. I think the price point is gonna be similar again, maybe slightly higher, maybe seven, eight cents a gram. This is gonna be their top line black tea potentially. Um, score on this. Well, look, it's definitely above a mare. Is it worth reinfusing? Yeah, you know what? I would say it is. It's worth, I would give it another reinfusion. Is it stashable? No, I would say it's not quite stashable, but because I'm feeling generous, I'll give this just under stashable. This gets a 5.9. 5.9 for this black tea. Nice little menthol note happening in there. Little medicinal note, I like that. But yeah, the, the, the texture is making my tongue furry and the back of my throat catch. Let's see what this is. Unknown season cultivar origin, well, origin, if it's called a Ceylon, origin must be from uh, Sri Lanka. So picking, well, it's, it's larger leaf material and elevation unknown, four cents a gram. So it seems like Woodman's just puts a flat price <laughs> on their teas, which is never a good look because that means that they are literally just sort of buying in a very, very lazy way. They can't even be bothered to price according to what they purchase. So they'll just average it out. Um, but the quality of the leaves is definitely fairly obvious here much higher quality than the previous teas that we had. So uh, four cents a gram, um, what did I say? I said seven or eight cents a gram. So yeah, you know, the prices are not bad for these kinds of teas, but nothing special, a 5.9. So Woodman's Market, nothing to write home about. It got 
fours, it got threes. It's just in the fives, just nudging into the sixes. If this is their highest quality tea, then they certainly need to step up. Thank you so much, Sue, for sending these in. Nothing particularly special. I hope that you agree. If you love these teas, then I do apologize. If I'm being overly critical of them, of course, drink the tea you love. If you love them, then just keep drinking them. If you'd like to send us some supermarket teas, make sure it comes from a supermarket, which means that, you know, it needs to come from a place which sells toilet paper, cat food, shampoo, and tea. And, uh, Send them to my attention, but make sure that you write supermarket teas somewhere in a sealed envelope without the information being shown so that I can give it to Celine for her to collect it and uh, write all this information so I know nothing about it. There you go. Woodman's Market. Meh. It's just archetypal. Meh. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos. Taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff, not this stuff. And spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.